Jeff hit me up and said, hey, how important is spring ball in this era of college football? Who knows how many players are still on your roster after spring? You could lose multiple starters and have to start back where from where you started. Uh, yes, Jeff, you can. So spring, to me, is both more different than it's ever been, but also more important than it's ever been. You are about to see the harsh, violent reality of the no rules transfer portal era on full display later this month. I am not overstating this. It will be the wildest transfer portal era that you've ever seen. And it's going to completely gut some of your teams. Just calling it like it is. And some of you are also going to become national championship contenders that don't think you are coming out of spring football. And it's going to be amazing. Well, it's going to be amazing to witness. It's going to be a nightmare to be a part of. So, Imagine the paranoia amongst college football coaches right now. I've been knee deep in it lately because I've been talking to them nonstop. Think about the idea that this in spring is the most crucial team building portion of your season and you don't know who your team is. You don't know if you may be given first or second team tight end reps to a guy that unbeknownst to you has been in contact with half a dozen schools and he's on his way out the door after spring. After spring being the key words there, when the hay's already in the barn. The next thing you're going to do is summer workouts, which you are not allowed to observe. And then you, you got some time with them, but by and large, it's fall camp. That's the next thing on the horizon. And all of a sudden, Gary's out the door because he got a better offer from somewhere else. Is it legal? Yes, it is. Is it wonderful for the kids short term? Financially, I suppose it is. Is it good for the sport? No. Unequivocally, I would argue it's not for anyone, the players included, because there's more to becoming an elite football player than getting paid in college. That's my personal opinion. I am not lobbying to be sent to Capitol Hill anytime soon. Imagine the paranoia, though. The paranoia on how you divide reps. I talked to a coordinator last week who said, my best player we're unsure about at a specific position. He said, we're not giving him first team reps in the spring. We're hoping to send a message to him, but we're really just trying to give reps to guys we know are going to be here. We don't know if he's gonna be here. We hope so, we think so, we don't know so. Think about getting accurate intel. How do you know the feedback you're getting from your guys is the real feedback? There is a premier defensive player in the sport right now. Going to be on the cover of a lot of preseason magazines if he stays with his current team. Uh, Going to be on all kind of all-American preseason watch lists. And he's on the market. And I'm not sure his team even knows. It's just, it's the state of affairs right now. Like, that's the condition of college football right now. Think about having to scout other rosters. Other rosters if you're being real about it, you have to know about. If you're gonna lose guys, you have to know who's available. And in some cases, you have to be proactive. We talked to Mac Brown about this a couple of weeks ago. Mac Brown said, I know it's going on, and I know if we did it, we could probably go get some players. He said, I'm just not gonna do it. If it costs us games, if it costs us a competitive advantage, but in the interim, it means that we don't circumvent rules. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm content with that. Most coaches would not echo that sentiment. Or if they did publicly, they'd be lying to you. Because most of them are well down the road of gathering the most intel they can on their guys, finding out their weak points, and then going and proactively scouting and reaching out to other rosters. What's going to happen? You know, what's going to happen? Uh, also, I, I remember last week when we were with Hugh Freeze, he said it really well. Auburn's about to be a huge player in the portal. Auburn is trying to get better on the, defense, the, the defensive line at least. And so, for example, I asked Freeze last week, I said, hey, how do you like this? How weird is it to be going through the latter portion of spring practice and you don't really even know if those guys are going to be on your team this fall? And you could go get pieces that fundamentally alter your football team. And he was like, I don't like it at all, but it kind of is. He said, um, I hate the idea of a 24-hour recruitment. That was a really good way to put it. Never heard anyone put it that way. Back in the day, you know, until like 30 minutes ago, recruitments were multi-year processes 
where you saw the kid as a sophomore in high school. You got to know his mom, dad, aunt, uncle, sister, nephews, cousins, high school coaches, position coaches, and you forged a relationship. And then whoever recruited him best won out. And now there's guys that you don't even know are possible ads for your team that all of a sudden are on the radar. And you've got to, for lack of a better term, vet them over the span of about 12 to 24 hours. You can't afford to be more thorough than that or else someone is gonna cut the corner on you and take them for themselves. And is it legal? Yeah, but legal, illegal, forget about that for a second. Is that really the best path for college football? It's a horrific path for college football. That's me talking, that's not any of them, although most of them would agree with that. Uh, it's me as a fan of this sport telling you it's not the way it should be. It's not the way it should be. There will be legal minds, there will be NIL-centric folks who, who clip that and they'll say, well, shame on you for not wanting those kids to get theirs, or, or well, it's all legal. I know that. I know that. It's not what's best. I care about the game. Like, I care about what's best for the game. And I don't think that's what's best for the game. Side note, since we're talking about spring games and spring practice, I will make my annual spring game plea when I am college football commissioner, I will heavily incentivize and even plea for real football games or makeshift versions of real football games to be played in spring. Because when I'm college football commissioner, we will finally put into practice the idea that instead of playing FCS teams in the fall, you could and should schedule them as your spring opponent. And I've got CBS and NBC and Fox and ESPN over here who would love the spring inventory. And I've got a big fat paycheck for you FCS teams to come and take your lumps, but also learn valuable information about your team and provide a real life opponent for that team just as you would in the fall, except we're not calling it a regular season game. And how this is not happening is beyond me. So much progress quote unquote, being made in this sport. And yet we're still not playing games for spring. Now, here's what I didn't just say. What I didn't say is when I'm college football commissioner, I will mandate that everyone plays a legitimate opponent for their spring game. I don't care if you do or not, but I want you to, and I'm heavily incentivizing you to, and I will look on you with a favorable eye if you choose to. It should be common sense that you should want to, but you don't have to. You know, it's kind of like um, when I was playing baseball at Harris County, we had voluntary conditioning. You didn't have to. You didn't have to. Uh, Coach Mark Gilrath down there could not legally make you show up at Harris County High School at 5.30 a.m. to run until you puke. It was probably in your best interest, but who's to say you have to?